Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time, he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have a particularly odd story. Uh, on the surface, when you just sort of read it as a narrative, you have Jesus sailing across the Sea of Galilee to the other side, that's important. And then he is confronted by this odd man full of demons, who and then the demons yell through him, leave us alone, stay away from us, Jesus. But what's odd to me is the next thing that happens is that Jesus takes the demons that are in the man and throw, him, throw them into a, a, a herd of pigs that then rush and fall into the water. The man is made well and he follows Jesus, which is always a good thing to do after someone has taken that many demons out of you and thrown them into pigs, but it's the pigs part that always captures my imagination. I've been to the Holy Land, and for those of you who, who have as well, you all know that the that they describe the land itself as the fifth gospel. So the other side from the Galilee uh, is across this lake. And you can be over there on that side of the lake and you can kind of get a feel for how weird that day would have been where you watched a bunch of demons fly out of a man and go into a bunch of pigs and go into the, into the sea. We then kind of move our ourselves to remember some things, particularly the things about water. Water is a symbol of transformation. You and I both, all of us, have lived at least nine or ten months in, a, in water. 
Uh, we were water creatures to begin with. After our birth, we walk along the land, but water then becomes the symbol of transformation, how we make a move from being a, a baby in a mother to, uh, to transformed into a creature that lives on the earth. And, and so water throughout the Bible has always been about transformation. Uh, Jacob and his dream and his wrestling with the angels takes place near a river. Even our baptisms themselves, the, by John in the River Jordan, the going underneath the water and coming out the other side, the coming up out of the water, and symbol of dying and rising. So whenever you hear of water or crossing of water or anything to do with water, particularly in the Bible, heads up, it's a story about transformation. In this one, in particular, it's the transformation from being having lost your mind and out of control by, uh, by reason un, un, unknown to you, by reasons that you can't control, to being made well. And that transformation that occurs. That transformation occurs through, uh, through Jesus. And then the transformation does an odd thing, particularly in the story. Again, I still can't get my mind around the fact that there is a man who was sitting on a hill with a herd of pigs, minding his own business, when suddenly Jesus takes demons and throws them in his livelihood and they drown into the sea. The man then is left without his livelihood. He's just standing there on the shore with his staff, with his herding thing, going, why, why, why my pigs? Couldn't it have been the goats? Couldn't it have been the sheep? Couldn't it have been anything else? But why my pigs? I really don't have an answer for that, it's just always captured my imagination. But the transformation is dramatic, and that's where we need to kind of hang our hat. Our transformation as people uh, is constant, every day. I've been told that we change every seven years, that the cells in our bodies that you have now, the cells that I have now, will not be the same cells uh, in seven years. Your whole body will be, new, made, be made new. So we're constantly in a transformation. One of the things that I always, I always like is when uh, a young couple comes to me, or a married couple rather, comes to me, and they, one of the other of the couple says, uh, this is not the person I married. And I'm kind of like, that's right. Exactly. It's not the person you married. We are about growth in this world of ours, and we are about growth in this church of ours, and we're about the transformation work that we all participate in. This is the beginning of the season of Pentecost, and as we make our way through this very long season, this will stretch from now, here in June, all the way to, uh, to the end of November. Pentecost, the proclaiming, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the, uh, the, the, the transformational powers will be on display. I'm also aware that this is Juneteenth, that this is a time when our country transformed when people heard that they were no longer in slavery. We have the ability to transform. Often we are inundated by uh, the demonic, things that we cannot control that move us around and cause us to do uh, ridiculous things. But we are healable. We are healable. We can transform. We can be different. If we could change a country, that thought it was a good idea to hold people in slavery, then certainly we can change a country that can't figure out how to stop children from dying. We can change a country that provides a, a way for all people to be made well. We can transform. One of the things I do know, and this is important, is that only the divine can bring opposites together. And so in this season of Pentecost, that's the prayer. Dear Lord, please transform our broken world. Transform our broken selves. Transform our disagreements. Transform our possessions. Transform us as dramatically as you transformed that man so long ago. Send the demons away from us. Help us. Lord Jesus, help us. And, in, and it is in this Pentecost season that we are reminded that, yes, Jesus does heal. Yes, Jesus does make well. And yes, Jesus will 
help us. Amen. I was standing by my window on a cold and cloudy day when I saw the purse come rolling for to carry my mother away. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Well, I went back, home was lonesome for my mother, she was gone. All my family there was crying, what a home so sad and alone. Will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky, Lord, in the sky. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you rescued your people from slavery in Egypt, and throughout the ages you have never failed to hear the cries of the captives. We remember before you our sisters and brothers in Galveston, Texas, who on this day received the glad tidings of their emancipation. Forgive us, for the many grave sins that delayed that liberating word. Anoint us with your spirit to bring good news to the poor and to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the year of your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Spirit.